I welcome each one of you, my fellow pilgrims to heaven, for our weekly Bible study in English. This is the third Sabbath school lesson study. The title of our lesson study for the third lesson is The Power of Exalted Jesus. The Power of Exalted Jesus. The memory text is found in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. God is so gracious to us. He brought us to study the third lesson. Let us pray before we open God's word to learn from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you for your son Jesus and his exalted position in heaven. It's because of his death and resurrection and his ascension. Lord, we acknowledge his authority and his power. Lord, we want to thank you for everything. Because of his supreme sacrifice, we have salvation. And also, we are also going to have exalted position in heaven after second coming. Bless each person who is watching this video and also sharing it with others. Bless those people who are also sharing these thoughts with their local congregation. Thank you, Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can understand the deeper implications of this lesson. And also give us heavenly wisdom so that we can understand this important spiritual truths because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Those verses we are going to learn. There are many, many important, deeper spiritual truths in this portion of God's word. Our memory text comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, which says, What is the exceeding greatness of his power? That power is to us, the human beings. It's all in Jesus Christ to those people who believe in him. According to his mighty power and that is available in Jesus Christ. When he raised himself from the dead, that is God the Father, he raised him from the dead and also set him at his right hand in heaven. So what is that exalted position of Jesus Christ? Because of that exalted position, he also has that supreme power, the power which nobody has in the universe except God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. That's why, my brothers and sisters, we learn this important truth because of the Holy Spirit. Every believer will know if they are filled by the power of the Holy Spirit so that they can understand the importance of Jesus and his exalted position in heaven. As human beings, each one of us look for more authority, more power. For example, if somebody joins a school as a teacher, but the teacher will have in the heart and the mind thinking that one day I want to become the headmaster. Some places they call head teacher. And after some time, the person also will have that desire. I want to become the principal. Because they want to climb the ladder of authority. Always this is the desire of human beings. But according to Ephesians chapter 1, each believer in Jesus Christ, we have that important truth to know that each believer will have that exalted power, exalted position in heaven after the second coming of Jesus. That's why Paul is writing these important truths by saying, we read in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15, when Paul heard that the believers in the city of Ephesus, they were still continuing in the faith in the Lord Jesus. He was so much happy and rejoicing because Paul left that city 
in 56 AD, Paul wrote this book of Ephesians, this letter of Ephesians in 62 AD, which means after a gap of six years, after a gap of six years, still they did not deviate from the faith. They still were strong in the Lord Jesus in faith. My brother, my sister, are you also strong in the Lord Jesus? After some years, after your conversion, after your baptism, are you still in the Lord? Strong as it were, this is the first few days after your conversion. Yes, after the conversion, when we take baptism, for the few days, for the next few days, we are on fire for the Lord. As the days go by, slowly that zeal, that enthusiasm, slowly begin to dry away. Is that happening to you? But these believers, in the absence of Paul, in the city of Ephesus, Paul came to know they were still strong in the faith in the Lord Jesus. And also Paul heard another uh, important aspect. That was, Paul heard another important thing about the believers, that they love each other. This is what we call brotherly love which means loving each other as our own brother, our own sister. They had such a, a very, very cordial relationship. Because of those two reasons, they still continued in faith in Jesus. They loved each other. They honored each other. Because of those two aspects, Paul was very, very happy. And he was saying, I am thanking God without ceasing. We can read that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. So that was the reason for Paul to thank God and continue to thank God. And also we read in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 21 and 22, Paul says that he was praying and thanking God without ceasing because of the good report what he had. Paul wrote this letter and sent it with one of his close disciples, a faithful person who was assisting Paul. His name was Tychicus. Tychicus, he sent this letter. Why? Paul was in the prison. When the believers in the city of Ephesus, when they came to know Paul was imprisoned in Rome, surely they must be very, very discouraged. And they must be asking questions and say, why Jesus Christ allowed him to be in the prison. How is Paul doing? So they had so many doubts and they had so much discouragement in their heart because their spiritual father, so to speak, and their mentor and the one who brought them into the truth is in chains. That's why in order to encourage them from the prison, Paul wrote this epistle and sent it with Tychicus, who was assisting him, helping him in the prison. So that to encourage them. So we need to learn this important truth. That is, Paul was a man of prayer. He was praying to God. He was praising God. He was praising Jesus and thanking him without ceasing. That's what he was doing. My brother and my sister, do we have this prayer life? Paul had so many challenges in his life. Three times in his life, he had shipwreck. Several times he was beaten and he was stoned almost to death. But in all of those challenges of his life in the ministry, because Saturn brought so many challenges in his ministry so that Paul would not continue his witnessing among the heathen people. Paul would go back to his place, Jerusalem, because of the challenges which he faced. But Paul was not discouraged because Paul was a man of prayer. My brother, my sister, do you have problems, physical problems, spiritual problems, personal problems, family problems, problems in the church? We need to pray. And prayer is the gift of God for every believer, which is freely available 
so that by through prayer we receive power more prayer more power less prayer less power and no prayer no power this is what is the truth that's why paul was praying for them i want to ask you my brother my sister that is do you pray for others do you pray for uh, the salvation of people around do you pray for the people around you in that village or in that colony or in that neighborhood in that street where you live do you pray for their salvation and do you pray for your enemies jesus taught us matthew chapter 5 verse 44 pray for your enemies do you pray for them maybe sometimes we may pray in our desperate situation saying god to curse them or to punish them but jesus was telling pray for them their safety their well being their salvation that's what we have to do jesus himself did it he was on the cross he was dying on the cross with so much of pain but jesus prayed by saying father forgive them they do not know what they do luke chapter 23 verse 34 yes we need to have such a prayer in our lives even praying for our enemies and their salvation and their salvation and also paul tells us in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 to 18 in every situation give thanks unto the lord in every situation human beings we the human beings we will not have all good situations there are many challenges in life often but even in those challenges in the bitterness which we experience from time to time in life still we have to thank god for example if somebody had an accident still we can thank the lord and say lord thank you you kept me alive i'm not you kept me alive though there are some injuries lord i'm still alive thank you jesus yes we need to thank god that's why paul says in every situation give thanks unto the lord without ceasing that's what we have to learn and also paul is telling us to experience experience that power when we accept jesus as our personal savior the holy spirit begins to work in our hearts and minds in our heart in our mind that is by the help of the holy spirit we begin to have insight insight this is what sometimes commonly we call the spiritual eye is open spiritual eyes are opened so that we can see the realities we read this one in ephesians chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 the father god the father give you the wisdom this is the heavenly wisdom and the knowledge that is the heavenly knowledge of him that is referring to jesus christ the holy spirit comes into the lives of every believer at the point of our conver conversion when we convert and take baptism the holy spirit comes into our lives we also learned in the previous lesson that in ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 we are sealed by the holy spirit when we accept jesus as our personal savior but the holy spirit helps each one of us to have that insight into the life of jesus into all of that precious spiritual blessings which we are going to have in jesus christ that's why paul was telling his believers saying that you need to experience the power of jesus christ that is possible through the holy spirit and also we need to participate we the believers can participate in the power of jesus in the days to come that is after second coming as jesus obtained that power because of his death and resurrection we read in ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 21 22 and 23 it says 
the Holy Spirit will bring that awareness of the power of Jesus Christ. It's all available because of his resurrection, death and resurrection. And because of his death and resurrection, because he successfully completed the salvation work for which he came to this earth as a human being. Because of his incarnation, because of his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, because of his resurrection and ascension. Jesus is exalted in heaven. The truth of resurrection is non-negotiable. Which means the doctrine of resurrection is the truth. You cannot com compromise with that. It is the truth. Jesus resurrected after the death. He foretold that one. I'm going to die and I'm going to come back to life. I'm going to be raised. On the third day, as he foretold, Jesus came back to life on the third day. And also, Jesus ascended to heaven. Because of that, we also have an assurance. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the chapter on resurrection. It is through one man, that is Adam, death came into this world. It is because of one man, second Adam, again, eternal life through his resurrection. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22 onwards. So the resurrection of Jesus is an assurance for each believer. One day, though we die on this earth, we are going to resurrect with, with power of God. In newness of life, this is what we call immortal life. We read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 51 to 53. In the twinkling of an eye, all the dead in Christ will resurrect with a mortal body. When Jesus comes the second time, all of those who are living, the believers, they will be changed into glorious body in the twinkling of an eye. Which means, when we close our eyelid and open, how long does it take? It's a fraction of a second. Within that short time, a fraction of a second, all the living righteous people or all the living believers will be changed into glorious body. But the saints who are sleeping in the Lord, that is the believers who died many years ago, they will resurrect when they hear the trumpet sound. They will also resurrect with immortal body. So we are going to also experience that power of resurrection at second coming. Each believer will experience that one. And not only Jesus experienced that power of resurrection, but because of his death and resurrection and his ministry and his successful completion of the salvation work on the earth by dying for each one of us. Jesus came to this world to give us that salvation assurance. Jesus went back to heaven. This is what is we call, this is what we call ascension. Then he sat at the right hand of the majesty as we read in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. We have such a high priest who is sitting at the right hand of the majesty. Majesty is referring to God the Father. So he is in heaven, exalted place above every name in the universe, above every person only God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They have that exalted place, the most superior place. It's all because of His love and His grace. We, the sinners also, by accepting Jesus as our personal Savior, we can also experience that exalted position in heaven. Because we are told we will also sit on the throne and we will rule with him. He is going to be the king of kings and lord of lords. As his sons and daughters. As prince and princess. We are going to rule with him. We are told about this one. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. He made us through his death and his resurrection. He washed all of our sins in his own blood. And made us as kings and priests. 
we also read in Revelation chapter 22, verse 5, the last part, which says, we will reign with him forever and ever. That is throughout the eternity. Whom we are going to rule? All the other worlds in the universe. The entire universe. Because he's king of kings and lord of lords. So we are going to rule with him. What a privilege. What a power. What an honor. What an exalted position. Even angels are not going to have that exalted position of ruling with him. Only the sinners. Because he died for us. By accepting Jesus, we have all of these unimaginable riches of his glory, the riches of his salvation. We are going to enjoy throughout the eternity. It's because of Jesus, we can go to heaven, we can sit on the throne, we can rule with him throughout the eternity. That's why we read in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, Christ raised us and made us to sit in the heavenly places. He raised us from sin. He's going to raise us from the death if we die before he comes. Then he's going to make us to sit in heaven beside him. What an honor. What an exalted position. Many times, just for some authority just for some power, just for some position. Even believers also do all sorts of unbiblical methods. They follow many corrupt practices of the world like politicians. But here is something, my brothers and sisters, though you may not have any post, you may not have any authority in the church or in the organization, but the good news today is, if you remain faithful to Jesus as his follower, as his son and his daughter, we are going to have that exalted position in heaven, in the entire universe. This is going to happen within a short time after the second coming of Jesus. That's why Christ is above all authorities in the universe, not only on this earth. So Christ has the supreme power. Christ is above every name in the universe, not only in this world. Christ is going to be the co-regent with the Father. And we are going to be co-regent with the Son, because we are His sons and daughters. And we read in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21, Christ is above everything in this universe, every principality, and also we read in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, that Jesus is above everyone, every government. And we also read in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we are striving, we are fighting, not with flesh and blood, but with the authorities, with the rulers, and with the evil forces, with the evil forces, because it is the evil one. Satan is the prince of this world at present. And he is running the show. He doesn't come directly to rule any part of the world. But he uses his agents, puts them on the throne. So they do his agenda. They do things against God and His truth and His people. That's why we wrestle not with flesh and blood, that is not with human beings, but we wrestle with the forces of darkness, evil forces, Satan and his evil angels, with whom we are wrestling, we are striving, we are fighting with them spiritually. This is the spiritual battle. In this spiritual battle, we don't need any gun, bomb, hand grenade. We don't need those weapons of this world. Only two weapons we need, prayer and the word of God. Because the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. That's why we need prayer. 
Prayer has so much power. We can overcome Satan as Paul did. Each time whenever he had a trouble, each time he had persecution, it was the prayer, the prayer life of Paul which gave him success. That's why we need those two weapons, prayer and the word of God, the Bible. The city of Ephesus was a center of black magic, soothsaying, fortune telling, sorcery. So that was fully given to Satan. But because of the preaching of Paul, because of the witnessing of Paul, many people, in fact, almost the entire city, they left their satanic practices. They left their black magic. They left their fortune telling. They left their soothsaying. They left all of those practices of Satan. In fact, we read, we learned in the first lesson that they brought all of those black magic books, all the books which are related to satanic activities, they burned them in front of everyone. We read that in Acts chapter 19, verse 19. In those days itself, it was costing 50,000 pieces of silver. So expensive. They burnt everything. They became followers of Jesus. And they said, we will not make any idols anymore. We will not sell any idols anymore. They left their work. So there was real, genuine conversion. That's why... They left Satan and his practices. My brother, my sister, I want to ask you, after knowing Jesus Christ, after having the knowledge of salvation, after taking baptism, did we give up all of those activities which are associated with Satan? Do we? It is very, very sad. Still many believers in many places in almost all the denominations, all the churches, they still follow some heathen practices when it comes to the birth of a child, when it comes to the marriage, when it comes to the inauguration of a new house or a new shop. Many, many believers also are compromising and also practicing the practices of Saturn, the heathen practices like breaking coconut, then boiling milk in the inaugurated house first. They boil the milk so that the milk should overflow and it should fall on the ground. There are many, many heathen practices. My brother, my sister, I want to ask you, do you still doing such heathen practices? We need to stand with Christ. We need, to, we need to stand firm in our faith. We need to stand firm in the principles of the Bible. We cannot compromise. We cannot travel on two boards. That's why we need to choose whom you serve. Joshua said, I and my family will serve the Lord. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15. You choose this day whom you will serve. Yes, the people, the heathen city, the heathen people, when they came to know Christ and his salvation, and the forgiveness of their sin. They left all of those heathen practices, including worshipping that famous goddess Diana in the city of Ephesus. Satan brought through the back door into some churches idol worship. They're worshipping idol of Mary. They're worshipping idol of Jesus. They're worshipping idols of Peter, Paul, and John, and other disciples. My brother, my sister, thank God, most of us do not have that problem. But there are some of, some of the people and the friends whom you know may be doing that. We need to tell them with the word of God, 
not to compromise with the heathen practices, but follow the truth, follow the Bible, because Bible is our standard, it is our benchmark for our faith, for our doctrine, for our practices. That's why we need to be people of faith. We also read in Psalm 110 verse 1, Psalm 110 verse 1, it is said, the Lord said, sit on my throne till I make your enemies a footstool, which means who is the enemy of God? That is Satan. Satan is the prince of this world at present from the time Adam fell into the trap and the temptation of Satan, Adam and Eve, and that rulership, the dominion was illegally taken by him from that time till the day of second coming. Satan is controlling, ruling this entire planet. But the day is going to come soon. After the second coming, after the millennium, Jesus will be coronated as the King of kings and Lord of lords for the entire universe. All of his enemies, Satan and all of those, one third of the angels who have fallen, and all the people who joined as the agents of Satan, all of them will be made as the dust. They will be consumed by the fire, which we call hellfire. And God's people will walk on that ash or the dust. We read that in Malachi chapter 4, verse 3. All the proud and all the sinners will perish. They will be consumed in the fire. They will be burnt up. They will turn to dust or ash. And righteous people, God's people will walk on it. Then God is going to make, is going to create new earth and the new sky. That's why all of the enemies of Jesus will be made as the footstool, which means they will be under his feet. They will be under the feet of all the believers. That's what we read in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21. Christ is above every name, above every authority, above every government, above every so-called ruler or administrator. Not only in this world, but in the entire universe. That's why we read in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22, God kept everything under the feet of Jesus Christ. Everything is under the feet of Jesus Christ. That's why the exalted Jesus and his power, exalted Jesus and his enormous power which he has. That's why as the followers of Jesus, all of us know, we read in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, that Jesus is the head of the church. The church is his body. What is that church referring to? All of us as believers. We are the church. He is our head. So we need to follow what he says. That's why, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we have such an enormous power and blessings. We can't even explain in human words. We can't even imagine that much big resource, big power, and big blessings are awaiting for us in heavenly places. That's why many times as human beings, we think to have some authority, some money, some big house, some latest vehicle, only we think that is the authority, that is the power. But these are all earthly things, they will perish one day. But imperishable is salvation. Salvation is the greatest gift 
the greatest riches anybody can have is the salvation, that is the eternal life, which is freely available because of Jesus, his death, his resurrection, his, exalt, his ascension, and his exaltation. That's why, my brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of this lesson, let us recognize that supreme power, the greatest power, because is Almighty God. He spoke, everything came into existence. Not only that, He can also transform our lives only if you accept Jesus as our personal Savior and take baptism in His name, that is immersion baptism in the waters, and follow the light of the Bible and also follow the light of the Ten Commandments. If we walk in the Ten Commandments, in the light of the Ten Commandments, sure, each believer, rich or poor, male or female, whatever uh, your race, whatever the color of your skin, we are all sons and daughters of Jesus, saved by His grace and given this privilege because of His love. That's why whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life, John 3, 16. That's why, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is calling each one of us to participate in this exalted place in heaven throughout the eternity. It is not for one term, two terms, as we talk about this earthly responsibilities for our four years, five years of one term. Some places four years, some places five years, that term of that authority. But this is going to be throughout the eternity. What a glorious, what a great blessing we are going to have. It's all because of Jesus. That's why let us recognize the power of exalted Jesus so that by believing in Him, in His death, in His resurrection, and in His saving grace, we can also have such great honor to be in heaven and to continue throughout the eternity as His son and daughter, as princess and prince throughout the eternity. If that is your decision, Join with me. I want to pray and conclude this lesson study. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you once again because of Jesus and his supreme sacrifice, because of his death and resurrection and ascension. And he's exalted in heavenly places. He's sitting at the right hand of the majesty. He's sitting at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Thank you, Lord for this wonderful truth which we learned from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Bless each one of us. Bless those who are sharing this link, sharing this video, sharing the thoughts in this video with others. Bless them abundantly. Continue to take care of us. Thank you, Lord, for this humble ministry which you gave me. And continue to take care of me for your glory and honor. Let your name be glorified. And bless us, Lord, because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Continue to uphold me in your personal prayers for this humble ministry. And also those who are assisting me, these young people here. If it is God's willing, we will meet you in the fourth lesson study next week. Let God's peace and His grace and His protection be with each one of us and our families. God bless you.